This is Sharky from Aura Prep. I'm going to demo for you a quick trauma assessment that you are expected to perform on your New York State Practical Skills exam. Of course, your patient will be on the floor. I just don't want to hurt my back, so I'm going to have him on the table. You're told in your instructions what kind of scenario that you're dispatched to. So for this scenario, I have a person hit by a car. So to start off, I have my BSI, my senior safe. I approach my patient. I see I have only one patient. I'm going to see what my mechanism of injury is. I have a person hit by a vehicle. I'm going to call the fire department to block the road. I don't think I need any more additional resources at this time. I'm looking for life threats. I don't see any visible life threats on him. My impression, I have a mid-20s male laying supine on the ground, apparently hit by a car, and he appears to be unresponsive. Because of that, I'm gonna have my partner come and hold the C-spine to maintain C-spine stabilization. I'm going to check level of alertness. Sir, can you hear me? No response. Pinch, pinch for pain. No response to pain. Just making sure he has a carotid pulse, and he does. He's unresponsive on AVCU. Because of that, I'm going to open up his airway with a jaw thrust and look to see if I have to suction anything in the airway. There's nothing in there. I have to suction. I will put in an OPA to maintain that airway. Going on to breathing, I'm going to cut open my shirt, expose his chest, look for any signs, any bleeding, any decap, ETLS, anything I have to seal or stabilize on the chest. I'm also looking for adequacy of breathing and chest rise. On him right now, I see adequate breathing. Do I have that for my patient? Yes, you do. Okay. Um, I'm going to listen with my stethoscope. Midclavicular lungs sound clear bilaterally. Are they clear for the scenario? Yes, they are. Okay. I'm going to palpate his chest, feeling for crepitus fractures and equal chest rise. On him, I feel adequate chest rise. Do I have the same for the scenario? No, you don't. Okay. Because he's unresponsive with an OPA, I'm going to ventilate him with a BVM at 15 liters per minute. Moving on to circulation, I'm going to check for bleeding in the voids looking at every void in his body for a major or minor bleeding. I don't see blood anywhere that's important. Is that true for the scenario? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to check his carotid pulse. I feel a strong carotid pulse, but just to compare, I'm going to check his radial pulses as well. I have strong radial and carotid pulses. Is it the same for the scenario? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to check his skin. I have pink, warm, and dry for his skin. Is it the same for the scenario? Skin is cool, pale, and sweaty. Okay, he's probably in shock. I'm going to keep him warm. He's laying down. I'm going to keep him like that, and he's already on oxygen. I'm going to make my decision for him. He's a high-priority patient because he's unresponsive, being ventilated, treated for shock, the mechanism of injury itself. I'm going to call my dispatcher and say, hey, I have a mid-20s male that's unresponsive, being hit by a car, being ventilated, and treated for shock. What is my ETA for ALS? 10 minutes. Okay, I know the hospital is much closer than that, so I'm going to begin to transport him. Can I get a sample for anybody uh, here? Does anyone know him? Did anyone see what happened? I'll try to get some kind of history about my patient, but you might not have anybody to give you that. So I'm gonna start at the head. I'm gonna look in the ears and the nose for cerebral spinal fluid or bleeding. I'm gonna check the eyes, and ideally you would have a pen light, not just a pen. I'm gonna check the eyes, the equal and reactive. I'm gonna look at the facial bones, the cheekbones, the top of the scalp the top of the head for any decap ETLS. Coming down to the neck, I look at the neck for JVD or tracheal deviation. I would just check the mouth as well for any bleeding, make sure my OPA is in there. I'm gonna have my partner come and put a C collar on him. Moving down to the chest again, I'm gonna feel his chest. I have equal chest rise. listening to all six lung sounds. My lungs are clear bilaterally, are the same for the scenario? Yes. Okay, uh, moving down to the abdomen, I'm gonna palpate the abdomen in four quadrants. It is soft and non-tender. I'm gonna grab the pelvic bone and I'm gonna push in and then downward towards the ground looking for stability. The groin, I'm gonna visually inspect for a priapism or bleeding or incontinence. I don't see any of that. I'm gonna feel the legs together for symmetry, making sure they're equal in length. 
I'm gonna check one at a time. Just doing a closer inspection on each leg. I'm gonna check the pulse. The motor and sensor you probably won't be able to feel on him because he's unresponsive. I won't be able to get that on him. We check the other leg. Feel a good pulse, probably can't get motor and sensory. I'm gonna check the same thing on the arms. Arms together, making sure they're equal in length. I'm gonna check one arm at a time. I'm gonna feel the pulse, and I probably can't get motor and sensory on this arm. And the same thing with this arm, a closer inspection, looking for any DCAP ETOS. Feel the pulse, probably can't get motor and sensory. I'm gonna log roll him now just to check his back. So I'm gonna set him up for a log roll. On the head person's count, we would move. One, two, three. I'm gonna hold his shoulder. I'm gonna just inspect the back and the buttocks for any bleeding, any decap BTLS, nothing noted. We're gonna roll back. One, two, three, on the head person's count. Now he would be, you know, quote unquote, on a long board. I'm gonna check his vital signs now. I'll start with the blood pressure. Put your hand down just for the visuals. I have a blood pressure of 126 over 84. Is it the same for the scenario? 90 over 60. Okay, I'm gonna check his pulse rate. I'm gonna feel his radial pulse. I have a pulse rate of 84 beats per minute, strong and regular. Is it the same for the scenario? You have a pulse rate of 120 beats per minute. Okay. I'm going to look at his respiration rate as well. I have a respiration rate of 16, full and regular. Is it the same for the scenario? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm gonna check his skin one more time. I have a pink, warm and dry for his skin. Is it the same for the scenario? Cool, pale and sweaty. Okay, well, I didn't find any secondary injuries that I have to treat. I'm gonna transport him to the hospital. I'm gonna reassess him every five minutes. I'm going to reassess his vital signs, his uh, interventions, the primary assessment and the AFCO every five minutes. When I get to the hospital, I'm gonna tell my report to the nurse that I have a mid-20s male that was hit by a car. He's unresponsive, being ventilated and treated for shock, could not obtain a sample history, and I found no secondary injuries that I have to treat. And that's trauma assessment.